All right, so um, in Math 126, you talked about arc length. In this class, we're going to talk about surface area. So um, if your surface is flat, if it's flat and parallel to the xy plane, then your surface area is just going to be the integral of 1 over the region. It's not going to be very interesting. It would be the same as if it were on the xy plane. It's not a three-dimensional problem. If your surface is slanted, um, and like slanted a weird way, then um, we need to figure out basically like what this slope is, right? Because there'll be more surface over the same region. It, it will be longer, just like it, it's longer to walk across a diagonal than to walk across one of the legs of a right angle triangle, but now in three dimensions. And we're actually going to use three dimensional Pythagorean theorem. So we'll look at the change in x, the change in y, and the change in z. And the sum of the squares of those is the square of the distance along the diagonal. So uh, we're going to multiply that by 1 and then integrate over the region. And that's how we will get surface area. So let's look at some formulas and then some examples. So in order to calculate surface area, um, let's go back and talk about arc length first. Um, so how do we calculate arc length? We took these small right angle triangles um, that had uh, side lengths dx and dy, which were very small. And then the hypotenuse was the root of dx squared plus dy squared. So we were integrating from wherever our bounds were, dx squared plus dy squared. And then basically, if you factor out a, a dx squared from here and then took it out of the root, so that's just dx, then we would get 1 plus dy by dx squared dx. And then that was um, the integral. So extending this to three dimensions and knowing that we want to multiply, basically remember we said if it were flat, it would be integrating 1. So we're integrating over a region 1 times something, right? And uh, we're just going to extend this. It, it'll be the three-dimensional version of this. So um, if we have z equals f of x comma y, then we're going to take the partial derivative with respect to x, square it, plus the partial derivative with respect to y, square it, and add 1, and then integrate uh, in either order, if it's a nice enough function, um, over dx and dy. OK, so uh, we've got a formula. We should be a little bit skeptical. So um, let's do an example that makes us less skeptical. So let's just do a really easy thing, um, which is just going to be the surface area of a cylinder. You could calculate this, maybe, before they gave you the formula. Right, here's, here's half a cylinder, actually. Right? Um, and let's make, uh, let's, do, let's do the first example with numbers. Let's make this length 10. And let's make the radius 1. And we'll put axes on here. So we'll put the x-axis, the y-axis is flat, and then the z-axis comes up here. OK, so then uh, what's the equation for the surface? Well, uh, we have this is a circle, basically, of radius 1. So in the z-x plane. So that means x squared plus z squared equals 1, or we're just taking the top half of the circle. So z equals the root of 1 minus x squared. So that's your surface. That's f of x comma y. And then uh, what's the region? Well, um, now we're looking at this rectangle basically on the bottom, right? Uh, x is going from negative 1 to 1, and y is going from 0 to 10. OK, um, so then I can use my formula. Uh, I need uh, the partial derivatives with respect to x and y. So hopefully you remember how to do that. Partial derivative with respect to x, uh, I need a chain rule. So it's 1 half, and then it's this thing to the negative 1 half. So it'll be a root on the bottom. Um, and then I need to take the derivative of the inside, which is negative 2x. So actually, these twos cancel. Um, and I'm left with negative x over the root of 1 minus x squared. OK, and then fy, there's no y's in there, right? No y's in here at all. So fy is 0. So now I'm taking uh, surface area should be the integral. Uh, and then I'll put in my bounds. So y goes from 0 to 10. x goes from negative 1 to 1. I'm integrating over a rectangle. 
and then I need uh, my formula. So the root of this squared plus this squared plus 1. So first thing squared is going to be x squared over 1 minus x squared, now not in a root, plus 0 squared plus 1, and then dx dy. And I can simplify that inside a little bit. Integral from 0 to 10, integral from negative 1 to 1, the root of, if I find a common denominator of 1 minus x squared, I'm actually left with 1 on top because your x squared and negative x squared will cancel. Okay, um, and then uh, this is the time, if any, to memorize these integrals. So um, I did not have them memorized before now, but this is arc sine of x. Uh, x goes from negative 1 to 1, and then I still have a dy out here. Uh, let's see, sine of pi over 2 is 1. Sine of negative pi over 2 is negative 1, so I have to subtract negative pi over 2, which means I'm adding a pi over 2 dy. So this is a total of pi, and then um, I'm integrating a constant, so pi y from 0 to 10. So this is 10 pi. Let's see if we believe it. I got 10 pi. Let's go back. We could have done this without them telling us any formulas, because if I just stretch out this piece, right, I get one big rectangle. The height is 10, and the length is half the circumference of the circle. Um, circumference of a circle is 2 pi times the radius, so the whole circumference of the circle would have been 2 pi, so half the circumference is pi. So yeah, my surface area is 10 pi. I agree. Um, now, you may protest that uh, we didn't prove the circumference of a circle, but you could do that with your arc length formula, and so um, you should be happy with either derivation now. Cool. Um, next video, uh, we're going to do a more complicated surface area example um, that will make you think this is even cooler.